なぜそこまで麦わらを信じる<笑> D はまた必ず嵐を呼ぶ Trauma, especially in the form of childhood trauma, is a common occurrence in One Piece flashbacks. Laws, however, is a bit unique. Unique because his flashback is not meant to stand on its own. There is important context that needs to be added to the whole. And this comes in the form of another flashback of a separate character. Both stories traumatic, both still scarred by the events that changed their lives for the worse. Law witnessed his family, and even his entire homeland, be destroyed. The ones who were responsible representing the world. The world took from Law what he loved most, and as if to wrench the last amount of hope out of him, gave him an incurable disease to boot. But rather than lie down and take the beating until his inevitable death, Law chose to instead go out with a more worthwhile bang. It doesn't take Doflamingo long to accept Law into his ranks. Even being the child he was, it was as simple as looking into the young boy's eyes to understand that their worldviews were almost identical. Doflamingo went through something very similar in his childhood. The same system that robbed Law of his homeland robbed Doflamingo of his lifestyle and the status that came with it, making his family a target for the resentment of humanity that had been bottled up for so long. He lost so much, and even lost more with his own hands. The child was only able to pull that trigger because he had experienced both heaven and hell. And then he, just like now with Law, came to the conclusion that this disgusting world is one not worth being righteous in, that if one wants to viably survive in this darkness, Then they must shroud themselves in darkness as well, or be destroyed by it. But then, why, if this is all the case, is Law the only one that gets saved from that mentality? Corazon is a character mostly seen through rose colored lenses. He is the younger brother of Doflamingo, and the opposing force that is supposed to represent the good still left in the Don Quixote family after Homing's passing. Doflamingo values family, a faint glimmer of light behind a malevolent smile, a faint trace of humanity. Which is why, even though Korra had already dropped breadcrumbs of betrayal in plain sight, Dofi allowed himself to ignore the evidence so that he could preserve his last remaining flesh and blood bond. He showed mercy on Korra's own because he didn't want to pull that trigger again, didn't want to admit that his brother was that much different than himself. But Korra's own, despite being portrayed as one of the most kind hearted souls in One Piece, never reciprocates that mercy. Law struck a knife into Rosianante, yet despite this, he forgives Law because he wanted to help him. But why did he want to help this boy he didn't even know? Well, as Corazon says himself, because he felt sorry for him. Felt sorry that he had become a product of the corruption of this world. He wanted to show Law, to prove to him that there is something worth living for. He wanted to show him love. And he did. There is still good in this world. I still have hope for survival. He gave Law both of these phrases. But in the process, his rescuing of Law from the darkness ultimately came at the expense of allowing his older brother to seep even further into it. He had betrayed Doflamingo, and just like his father, died by the hands of the one he betrayed. It all becomes clear on the surface. Justifiable retribution. What Law is doing is surely not wrong. Even the kind hearted Rosianante had said Doflamingo is inherently a crazed manifestation of evil. If Law executes Dofi, he would only be eliminating more needless darkness from the world. But the actual truth is something that Law could have never imagined. The truth being that Corazon is wrong. How is it that one can judge a human to be from the start an evil presence? How can one judge a whole individual's existence as bad without actually examining their past experiences? It isn't odd that Doflamingo is so evil. What's odd is that Rosianante, despite going through the same tragedy, can still keep such a warm hearted thought process. He even joins the Marines, a branch associated with the very organization that caused his life to turn into a nightmare. He spares empathy for law in his demeanor, because he knows where the origin lies. Yet he doesn't spare that same thought and care for his own flesh and blood older brother. Doflamingo commits injustice, but it is clear in his actions that his persona is not completely black. He cares for the things he treasures, and even Korra himself is one of those treasures he values. We even see through his nightmares that Doflamingo is still haunted by his past. This man isn't some demon from hell, but a product of the system that is this world, just like Law once was. And if the heavenly demon is in reality a human, no matter how hard it may be, He can still be saved. Yet Corazon chooses to look away from the truth, so it's only poetic that Cora's betrayal would lead to his death by the hands of the person he refused to look at directly. An aversion of the eyes that probably started when Doflamingo pulled that trigger. It was not only his father, but Corazon's as well that kneeled at the other end of that gun. When someone takes away something precious from you, it can easily blind the whole perception you have of that individual. 
Rosianante initiated a cycle with his quest to stop Doflamingo, a cycle that he inadvertently passed down to Law. Korra could not stop Doflamingo, because his bitterness towards him muddled his sense of justice, which ultimately led to his downfall. And just like Korra once had, Law witnessed Doflamingo take away something precious from him. And with this memory came a resolution that was synonymous with his saviors, but corrupted with that half-hearted justice all the same. If Law is justified for seeking revenge, then surely Doflamingo is justified for punishing the one that pushed him further into the hell he had already known. Nothing about Law's quest is noble. Nothing about it is necessarily good for the world. He targets the heavenly demon because he killed someone he cared for. The context of that action doesn't matter in Law's eyes. Korra sacrificed his life, and in return wanted Law to live a life worth living. Yet Law has only been repaying that debt with useless baggage, an obsession that has controlled his entire life's choices. And like Korra's own once betrayed Doflamingo, Law betrays the Straw Hats by only using them as a means to an end. These betrayals ultimately resulting in failure for both characters. Rosianante failed to stop his brother from taking over Dressrosa, and Law fails in taking down Doflamingo. However, for the second time in his life, Law is saved. Luffy, a man like Law, inheriting the will of D. It might seem overbearing to have even a character like Law be a D, but in a certain context, it adds depth to these two captains' relationship. Doflamingo is by blood a celestial dragon, a presence revered as holy, and as we know, the Ds are God's natural enemy. It seems only right that Law, especially with his past in the equation, must be destined to put an end to Doflamingo's diabolical reign. But he isn't the one to defeat Doflamingo. Luffy is. Law once used the Straw Hats to selfishly grasp what he wanted most. He, at one point, didn't even put much faith in the thought of survival for the Alliance. Luffy is a pirate, yet to even the citizens of Dressrosa, he seems like a hero. There's nothing here anymore that directly benefits him, but Luffy is a simple man. All it took was seeing his friends be hurt, and seeing the cage Doflamingo put around people to silence freedom, to make Luffy go on an all-out offensive with nothing held back. He had performed countless miracles in the past, because he always had a will to surpass any obstacle in his way. That will to try spurring forth an inspirational aura that so easily affects the masses. An aura called freedom. Law finally sees all of this in Luffy, a man that makes miracles happen because he puts forth his entire being when trying to achieve a goal. He's seen with his very own eyes all the people who believe in him, and are betting on his victory. And then Law, the man that put forth so much, devoted so much of his life to this one goal, bets on Luffy as well to do what he cannot. A D allowing another D to complete their journey. It is a testament to Luffy's gift, a result of those who truly look at this young man. Law is finally freed from the burden of his vengeance with Luffy's final blow, and as reluctant as he once was, is now in his own way, a cherished Nakama. Because all too similar like the Straw Hats, he was saved, and then after resolved to trust in Luffy. While obviously Luffy and Law are equals in terms of their positions in the Alliance, narratively Law has already demonstrated his willingness to allow Luffy to be the Shining Star. Something back in Sabote, he would have never thought possible given his similar pirate captain tendencies. But now even after his true goal being accomplished, he still has kept his alliance with the Straw Hats intact to take down Kaido and Law's ambition has remolded into being synonymous with their journey as well. The D name used to be an inevitable factor in Law's existence that defined his cursed fate. Yet, after meeting Luffy, that cursed fate seems more like a checkered one, a fate that he now devotes to examining, rather than being a slave to. If the D name is tied to the eventual liberation of the world, then who better to look at than the man who embodies the very essence of freedom? If Luffy is following a fated path, a path that Joy Boy carved out for him long ago, will this causality be a blight in Law's mind? After all, it only seemed right that a D must put an end to a Celestial, and that perfect storm, the perfect confrontation did indeed transpire. Inherited will. Law inherited a will that led to a failed destination, yet that failed path itself led to a new road that trails along Luffy's. Perhaps it is Luffy that will demonstrate what inherited will can accomplish. Perhaps it is Luffy's journey that will change Law's blighted perception of fate. Law, in actuality, never inherited Korra's true will. The last action, the last breath this man took was all for the child he wanted to rescue. It is, after all, always in death that these characters portray their true nature to live on in the future. This pure objective, separate from his dimmed prerogative related to Doflamingo, is what Rosianante truly wished to pass on to the next generation. It could be that Law's fate is to eventually inherit Korra's true will, a will related to that Chekhov's gun in Dressrosa, 
a hint to the future for Law's narrative conclusion. If Law uses the immortal operation to save Luffy, he would now be doing something true to the title of the Captain of the Heart Pirates, a deed that would only be possible of a man with as big a heart as any. A heart that he still had all those years ago when he vowed to become a doctor. A heart that he lost yet later reclaimed. And finally, it was Luffy who enabled that heart to move on and grow. The D name is what initially intrigued Law enough to help, and later ally with Luffy. It wasn't ever merely Luffy's persona. As a matter of fact, the actions Luffy takes fall completely in line with the storms that Law expects the people bearing that name to manifest. But now, after seeing Luffy so successfully forge a path that doesn't even take the name into account, yet almost perfectly harmonizes with it, Law has bet on Luffy's journey for the answers he seeks. Two destinies intertwined by fate. I wonder, just what will the conclusion of this alliance entail? Sacrifice? Or maybe something else? Who's to say for sure? All I can say, though, is as of now, Law is much more than a cool and brooding tough guy.